Hey design students, so in this video we're going to look at the simplest of our default shapes, the line tool. So the line tool is up here under our shape tools and it has the hotkey L to create line. Um, lines are extremely important because when it, when it comes right down to it, basically everything in a vector editor is made out of lines. If we look at these more detailed characters and shapes, and if I look at them in outline view, you can see they are made with lines. And then the computer is told how to fill in the space with those lines or how to make the borders around those lines look. So we're going to go ahead and create a new design. And I'm going to choose paper size US letter portrait. And I'm going to use the line tool, which again, I can click or I can press L on my keyboard and it will select it. To use the line tool, you have to click and drag to create a line. If you just click after pressing L, it will just go back to your selection tool, this pointer tool, the black arrow. You can see here, when I've created the line, I'm not drawing the pixels of that line as if this were MS Paint. This line exists as an object, um, by default and here on my layers is called a path, and you can see I can grab the ends of it and move it around. As I make lines, once there are other objects on the screen, you will see I start to get these little uh, measurements here that line me up with the different edges. These are basically smart guides that say, well, maybe you want to start at the same edge. Maybe I want to finish at this same edge or possibly even finish connected to that end. And that lets me, again, line stuff up. So here I can do this. Now, when I am creating a line, there are other buttons I can hold. While I'm clicking and dragging, I can hold the shift button on the keyboard, and that forces my line to be straight, vertical, or horizontal, or on a 45 degree angle. If I hold Alt while creating and clicking and dragging, it will instead create the line from its center point. So as I'm dragging out here, it's creating like a mirror in the other direction. You can even hold Alt and Shift at the same time to make it align on a certain angle and be created from the center. On the right side here, we can see the details panel about any of these lines. Here we can see the X and Y position of the line, and I can move it by changing these numbers. I can also change its size by changing the width and height of these numbers. Lastly, I can rotate by changing its angle, which changes a lot of numbers at once. And we're also going to look here Notice it mentions a fill and a border. Lines don't have a fill. We'll get to those when we get to shapes because there's no enclosed shape. But they do have a border, which is the line itself. Here, I can change the color of the line by changing the color on that line. Here, using the color picker, I can make these changes. I can also grab here where it says one point and drag it up and it will make my line thicker. This is the point width of the line. Be careful, if you go to zero, the line will no longer be visible, but it is still there. It just does not have any visible element that can be seen or printed. With any given line selected, I also have a number of other settings. They are here under this settings button next to the word borders. Make sure you select a line before clicking it. This gives me some options. Not all of them work with just a line. Many of them only work with shapes, but the ones on this left side here and this end arrow here all work. So here I can change how the end of the line works. Right now by default, it squares it off. You will notice this especially is as I make it thicker, you will see even though the point is here, the edge of this thickness of the line goes past. If I don't want that, I can choose this one and it will stay within the endpoints. 
If I'd rather have them rounded off, I can choose round. I can also increase the point value here on the dash and eventually get a dashed line. Notice that the ends affect every dash. You have to make the dashes much bigger when your uh, point value of thickness is bigger. Notice here to get dashed lines, I had to go all the way to 52. But with my yellow line, if I drag up on dashed line, I start to see dashes at 15 because it is affected by the thickness of the line. Notice the lines all have their own layer. They are stacked on top of each other like slips of paper. So here on my layers tab, I can see which line is above which, and I can reorder them to change that order. Here, if I drag this one to the top, now it will be a top. Lastly, using my settings, I can add arrows of shapes to the start or end of any of my lines. Here I can choose arrow and I get an arrow at the end of this line. Beneath it, this 100% controls the size of the arrow that gets put at the end. This bit here, the position, controls where along the line the arrow is. Lastly, if I toggle outline here, it will make the arrow head an outline. There are numerous other shapes that you can try, including bullet and diamond and other types of arrows. You can, can also control the dash width on your gap here if you want there to be more gaps and less dots. Those are the basics of the line tool in Gravit Designer.